Um, so on Tuesday, I'm facilitating a Transgender 101 workshop, um, and the attendants are going to be specifically youth between the ages of 14 and 24. So this makes it interesting because I'm, I'm not particularly fun. <laughs> Um, I laugh a lot, I joke a lot, but I'm not very good at, like, coming up with fun things. I only have an hour to do this workshop, and so I just planned it right now. Um, there's a lot to cover with Transgender 101, and so there's a lot of participation involved, but I was only able to fit in, like, one legit activity, which comes in the, at the beginning. Uh, and then I'm going to have people participate in, like, various ways. So this is what my plans look like, because I'm coordinated to, like, uh, bring out my younger side. That's right, my freaking outline is in crayon, but it's not, like, good crayon, it's, like, the cheap crayon that, literally, my crayon broke in half as I was writing. <laughs> um, so, like I said, I only have an hour, and so I tried to plan it, like, I don't know if you can see, there's, like, 10 minutes, and then 30 minutes, or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing that we're going to do at the workshop, and I'm telling you this, um, that you can share feedback with me or you can totally take my plans because I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to videotape any of it. And so if you want to take these things, uh, please do. Um, so the first part of the workshop is going to be the introduction. On my outline, I wrote me, them, the workshop, and the ground rules. And so basically I'm going to be like, hi, my name is Ira. I prefer the pronouns he, him, and his. Um, and, you know, whatever credentials I have, which I don't really have any other than being trans, which doesn't make me inherently, like, knowledgeable of queer issues. I'm just a trans person who, has to, who happens to think a lot <laughs> about trans things. And so that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to have the participants introduce themselves um, with their name and preferred pronouns. Whenever I um, facilitate a workshop, I always have people do that. And um, I ask them, not everybody pays attention, but I ask them to not say male or female pronouns or masculine or feminine pronouns because that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, male and female pronouns are pronouns that people consider male and female as individuals, not necessarily as like a social construction, right? And so if someone, someone can identify as male but still use she, her, and hers. And so, um, and sometimes cisgender people prefer gender neutral pronouns, in general, like you know, as according to the social construction. And so, like, in that sense, they, them, and their could be male or female pronouns, depending on who uses them. Um, and so when people tell me that, I just pretend to not know what they're talking about. <laughs> I know what they mean, but I don't want to know what they mean. Um, because knowing what they mean just means that we have this gigantic social construction that is gender still. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to ask them to say, like, the specific pronouns that they like, he, him, his, she, her, hers, they, them, theirs, the, here, hers, or, like, a mixed-up version of all of them, or, like, I've heard of fairy pronouns, et cetera, et cetera. I still don't know what those are. <laughs> um, and then the last part is the ground rules, and basically the ground rules are just going to be, like, respect each other, respect the space, um, and please raise your hand if you have something to say, because I get distracted super easily. Um, and so if people yell something out, I will get, like, I will completely lose that thought. And, um, and that could be, like, something that's particularly important to the workshop. Um, not because I want to have, like, any power over whether or not people have the ability or the right to speak, um, but because I want, you know, one demon, one mic, I want the chance to be able to finish my sentence. <laughs> um, okay, so then the first part of the actual workshop Oh, uh, and then I have, like, little quotes to divide the section. And so the first quote says, Inside, deep inside, I never believed I was fully male. I never believed I was growing up enough of a man. I agonized a lot about not feeling male enough, and I had no idea then how much I was not alone. What matters is the center inside yourself, and how you live, and how you treat people, not whether or not you're a real man. There's no such thing. Um, and so I'm going to ask, like, you know, who likes to read out loud, and then I'm going to give those people um, little slips with these quotes on them. So then the next part is, what is sex and what is gender? Um, I like to say that in order to understand transsexualism and transgenderism, we have to understand sex and gender. So we're going to define a social construction. 
Um, and these are youth, and so that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not as intelligent as adults are because a lot of adults just don't understand the concept of a social construction. And so the way that I usually define it that most people seem to understand is um, by saying that it's something really important to our culture and giving certain examples like like religion or or family or capitalism or our democratic republic, the government, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There are lots of things that are social constructions. And so a social construction is basically something that our culture has made up, but not only has it made it up, it's made it like a big deal. Um, and so in that sense, most things are social constructions. Um, and so then I was going to define how sex is a social construction, um, basically just by asking who can define sex. And I'm assuming that they're just going to be like, whether or not you have a penis or a vagina, and then I'm going to be like, and? And they're going to be like, unless they've taken a, um, shoot, I can't think of the class. But yeah, unless they've taken a course that says otherwise, that includes chromosomes and hormones and things like that, and then I'm going to be like, so why do doctors only look at genitals when labeling people's bodies? If it's all of those things. And they're going to be like, Good point. And I'd be like, thank you. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so then after that, we're going to move on to, like, what is gender? I'm going to bring my handy dandy miniature whiteboard with me. Um, I'm going to see if the, the center where I'm giving the workshop has a bigger one because that thing is tiny. But it might be okay. I'm assuming there's not going to be that many people there or that many people participating. Um, and then I'm going to do what I normally do about, like, drawing the amoeba things. Uh, if you want, you can look at my Trans 101 playlist. It's on my profile somewhere. <laughs> it's on my profile, and um, defining gender is one of the individual videos. And then we're going to have an activity. Um, I'm trying to make the activity as inclusive as possible, and so basically I'm going to give out papers and crayons or whatever, and I'm going to tell everyone to draw or write or whatever what their gender looks like to them. Um, and so they're going to have five minutes, and then for another five minutes they're going to buddy up with someone and then talk about or sign about because um, there's a lot of deaf kids who uh, go to the center. Um, but they're, they're going to discuss or converse about how their things are different and what, what, they, what they think that means and um, how, what they find interesting about it. So then the second part, we're going to talk about identity. Or No, we have, an, we have another quote, sorry. Um, quote number two says, for a while, I was swindled into thinking, as many of us are, that there is a, quote, correct way to be trans. We have to take hormones, get surgeries, get a GID diagnosis, change pronouns, pass, feel like a boy in a girl's body, and get a preppy haircut. Um, and then we're going to move on to what is identity. So then I'm basically going to talk about how we all have identities because we all have power over our own bodies, um, despite the efforts of cissexism, right? Um, and then I'm going to talk about examples of transgender identities, uh, or trans identities, trans, transgender, transsexual, genderqueer, bigender, gender fluid, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I'm going to talk about how those terms FTM and MTF are problematic, um, because it basically says your identity, I, your identity doesn't matter on its own. I have to look to your coerced identity. Um, and so then I'm going to ask them all what they identify as. And, th and then I'm going to give like five minutes for responses and then some people can explain why I identify as this and I identify as that and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting um, the words that people use to describe themselves. And during this time, I'm going to incorporate like identifying our bodies. And so like we can talk about dicks and cocks and vaginas and cunts and, and vulvas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, quote number three, I don't have it written down um, because I was having a hard time finding it. I don't have Wi-Fi at my house, and I couldn't find it on my phone. But basically, it's this um, quote that this trans girl wrote on her blog. Um, I posted it on my blog because I really liked it, and basically it was about how she, at one point in time, was a boy. And for a while, she was not a boy, but was be being perceived as a boy. And then, you know, at this point in time of her life, she's not being perceived as a boy, and she doesn't identify as a boy. But when talking about her past, she will say, when I was a boy, because that's how she feels. Um, and how, like, other trans people and trans allies shouldn't discount her for that. And so, like, I really like that. Um, I also 
think it's important to incorporate quotes from trans women, which has, like, I googled quotes by trans women and, because I'm not really good at, like, remembering quotes like that, um, and I, and I couldn't find, like, anything. Pretty much all of them were about, like, um, the beauty pageant and, like, trans women being murdered and, like, all this bullshit, and so I was just like, ah, oh, fuck trans misogyny making my, my workshop more difficult. <laughs> But, yeah, okay, so the last part is how to uh, treat and talk about trans people, and then it's going to be divided into please don't and please do. Um, I have a little zine about, uh, it's called Trans Talk, and it's taken from another zine, and so I'm basically just going to, like, um, let them pass it around if they'd like, but I'm also going to, like, highlight key parts, and we're going to discuss those. Like, please don't ask me if I was born a, a boy or a girl, because, frankly, it's none of your business. Please don't ask me what my real name is. Please do ask me what my preferred pronouns are. Please do ask me um, what I want to be called when I'm out with people I don't know. Um, and then we're going to have a Q&A. Uh, and this is where the, like, the last... Or wait, no. Then we're going to have a Q&A. Um, and it's going to be like anonymous friendly. I'm going to put like a jar and pass it around and give them all little scraps of paper. Um, and, but if they don't want to ask anonymously, they don't have to. There's no, you know, there's no point if you don't want to. Um, and this is a chance where everyone gets to ask their potentially offensive questions that they're too afraid um, that I don't mind answering that they shouldn't ask other trans people, uh, at least not in, uh, while being uninvited. Um, and then if we have some extra time, I was thinking of showing like a, um, like a Rocco Coyotes, um, or, well, Catastrophe music video, or maybe, like, an Andrea Gibson, um, poem specifically about, like, being non-binary, um, which would be nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because the, I think she's the outreach coordinator, I'm not sure, but the person who, like, one of the people who works there, um, identifies as non-binary, and so it's gonna be really rad. If she can make it, maybe she'll talk about it, um, which is cool. She's open about it, but, but, um, yeah, so wish me luck on this. Hopefully it'll be fun. Um, I'm planning on, like, incorporating questions when I can and giving out candy. I hope they all get them wrong because I really love candy and then I'll be able to eat it. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Okay, bye.